So hello guys and uh, welcome back to another video in our channel. Today we are going to focus on the FA Cup. So this weekend we have FA Cup fixtures and uh, today we have two big fixtures. The game between Manchester City and Tottenham at the Spurs Stadium and the game that we're going to focus on today that is Chelsea versus Aston Villa. So Chelsea will be hosting Aston Villa for the next round, the third round of the FA Cup. And the FA Cup is such an important cup to win, especially for Chelsea, who would like to be in Europe next season, yet their league position is not quite great. So we're going to try and understand what Chelsea can do to actually beat Villa. So Aston Villa have one astute manager, one uh, manager who's so intelligent in setting up his teams to destroy and nullify opposition threat. And that man is Unai Emery. So we're going to try and delve into Unai Emery's tactical setup and how he can try to destroy or create problems for Chelsea. On the other hand, Chelsea are coming back for a 6-0 thumping over Middlesbrough. And a lot of people are downplaying this performance, but I will do an in-depth analysis to explain why this might have just been one of the best performances that Chelsea have put up this season. So Maurizio Pochettino is looking to try at least to reach the next stage in this cup tie and try to reach the final. Now, uh, in the latest press conference, Maurizio Pochettino has noted two key injuries. So. Uh, Nkuku and Gusto who appeared back in training, uh, Maurizio Pochettino has indicated that uh, both of these players are not yet ready to make their, to start this game that is going to happen tonight. So uh, Nkuku and Gusto will not play and this will be a huge miss, especially the miss for uh, from Malo Gusto and also it is rumored that Ben Chilwell is also not fit enough to start. So my lineup is this and uh, we are going to go with the back four of all center backs because currently we don't have full backs and Badia Shile is back in. Uh, ben Chilwell is said to be uh, cannot play three after three games after three days because he's just come from injury. Um, sticking with uh, the rest of the team will remain the same with Kanish Gomeka coming in for for Mudrik because I don't believe Mudrik will also start based on how he was hooked off at halftime. So Raheem Sterling will most likely start down the left with the Palma down the right and Kane Chukumeka will actually make a, uh, uh, a start against his former team. And uh, this will see the likes of uh, Colwell and Bade and Disasi playing as fullbacks with Badeshile playing alongside Thiago Silva at the centre-back system. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. So even before we begin our analysis, we need to look at Unai Emery. Uh, Unai Emery is uh, one of the best managers in the league this season. And uh, so far, Aston Villa are sitting comfortably in the Champions League places while Chelsea are in the ninth position. However, Chelsea have had a better form than Aston Villa of late, winning three games in the bounce. So first of all, we need to understand why Aston Villa are so good and how Unai Emery has managed to revolutionize this team. So kindly watch. Unai Emery's team lines up in a 4-4-2 system. Now, during build-up, what we see is that the two centre-backs drop on either side of Martinez, with the full-backs holding the width and the two holding midfielders playing close to each other. So, against high aggressive teams that press them from the back, they employ a Dizabi kind of a build-up structure. And there, here it is. You can see the position of Martinez, Pau Torres, and the other centre-back in the back line. You can see the position of Matikash and Lucadin, as well as the two holding pivots in Douglas Luiz and Kamara, all of them playing in that midfield position. So this build-up system is similar to what Brighton does. They hold on to the ball to bait a press and the main aim is to create these overloads in midfield. You can see how Manchester City are aggressively pressing Aston Villa high up the pitch. But the seven numerical advantages that Aston Villa has during build-up will enable them to beat this press easily. Look at Aston Villa building the play with as many as seven players with the goalkeeper acting as a third center back during build up so we know that aston villa like to draw opponents to press them 
and this is where we see the strength of Aston Villa. Their centre-backs, especially Pau Torres, is quite competent on the ball, so their forwards occupy the position between the centre-backs and the full-back to pin the opposition back line deep. And the near-side winger comes in midfield and inverts into this half-space in midfield where he can receive the ball directly from the keeper. And once he receives the ball directly from the keeper, the far side winger holds the width while the far side fullback advances. And this sees Aston Villa create this five man attack with one fullback and the front four. Oli Watkins is key since he likes to make runs. Here you can see a clear clip of Aston Villa. McGinn has received the ball in this inside position and you can already see Diaby and Oli Watkins are making this run behind Manchester City line. A simple pass to McGinn and Manchester City are in trouble. So Watkins is quite influential since his pace makes teams not to commit their defense line so high up the pitch. Now, the same thing happens down the other side. The far side winger, mainly Bailey, comes deep, receives the ball in this inside channel position and advances with the ball high up the pitch. Now, in this case, the right back is the one who will push forward to generate that width so that Aston Villa can end up again with the five-man attack against the opposition's back four. But this is not just an easy thing. This is something that requires teammates to identify triggers and move fast enough. Emiliano Martinez is also a competent goalkeeper. When his centre-back's options are closed, he can also pick these players in between the lines and immediately launch this transition moment. Una Emery's team thrives in this transition moment, so if a team commits its fullback to follow this dropping in forward, spaces are left in the flank areas where players such as Oli Watkins and Diaby can receive these balls in this channel, and the excellent passing accuracy of Martinez can make them to receive this ball in these wide channels and immediately launch quick attacks, especially running against the opposition backline. Let's look what happens when uh, they are in more of a settled possession, meaning that they have the ball and they have the ball under control. And this is what Aston Villa uh, likely do in these kinds of situations. So what we'll see is that uh, Aston Villa shift their 4 for 2 from a 4 for 2 system in wants to do. So in this case, you can see the position of Pau Torres. And uh, you can see how he marshals the back line his ability to hold on to the ball, draw in a press, and then create spaces in midfield and in the wide areas. So what we see is that he will draw in a player, play the ball to his centre-back, who now will play the ball into a free pivot, and they beat the first line of pressure. Once they beat the first line of pressure, we see that thing they like to do, with their winger coming in midfield to occupy that half space channel and all the Watkins moving into that number nine position. Now, the far side winger maintains the width while the fullback, whose winger has inverted, advances to overlock to give width down the right. See the position of McGinn, see the position of Watkins. So, McGinn can play this pass to Watkins and look at how disorganized Manchester City's backline is. Here again, look at that for a uh, deserving kind of a build up structure. You can see Pau Torres is holding on to the ball. He's now drawing in Alvarez to come forward and press him. Haaland is going to press the other center back, and now the two pivots will be free. The, the full backs are free in this position to receive the ball. So once that happens, the other full back moves back into the back line to form that back three, and now you have one overlapping fullback and one tacting fullback. Since Unai Emery operates the one up, one down fullback system. The same thing also happens down the other side. So what happens on the other side, you'll see Bailey coming deep to receive the ball or Diaby. And once he receives the ball in this position, he will occupy that channel position. While in this case, you'll find Leon Bailey, the, the, four, the winger will drop deep receive the ball directly from the center backs and cash will be the one who will be moving to overlap and now McGinn now will have to be the one to hold the width down the other side 
Here is a clear example of how this works. See the position of Diaby and Oli Watkins, all positioned in between Manchester City's pseudo back three system. The position of McGinn and Diab and Leon Bailey in midfield is creating a lot of problems for Manchester City. And now you can see that five man front attack created. And now Luca Dean is the one who stays behind to play as a more tacked in fullback. And Mati Cash is now giving the width down the right hand side. So it is unpredictable. You don't know which fullback is going to be the one who will overlap because both McGinn and Cash are effective in the wide areas. To understand also why they are so good in possession is that they have that box shaped midfield with a one winger who is inverted in midfield together with the DRB and the two holding midfielders. That's why you can see Aston Villa has this 3 to 5 shape. And unlike Chelsea, their two attacking midfielders are slightly deeper, so they give them numerical advantages against teams that employ a two man press. And this is how Aston Villa are easily able to play through their opponents. And uh, to understand also this thing, we need to understand how Aston Villa are shaped immediately when they lose the ball. So what makes Unai Emery's team even stronger is how they behave in transition. They are one of the best transition teams and I'm going to show you how. So in transition when Aston Villa has dropped so deep, what we see is that they like to form quick triangles and the ability to play through the press is quite remarkable because they are always able to generate a spare man. Watkins not identifies this position and immediately moves to push the defense line back while McGill uh, starts wider and the fullback already moves to overlap. So their movement out in transition is quite quick and they use one side of the pitch with overlapping fullbacks and wide wingers. Their out of possession shape is also quite remarkable. This is the reason why they are not conceding a lot of chances as you may think. So Aston Villa move into this mid 4-4-2 block. The main aim is to limit central progression as much as possible. So when they are facing more attacking, attack oriented teams such as Manchester City, Arsenal or Liverpool, what you are going to see is that uh, Aston Villa are going to press in a box shaped system. So they have a box shape of the two forwards and the two holding midfielders. But Aston Villa will not be quite as aggressive but rather use their forwards to sit on the two pivots. So from this clip you can see the position of Diaby and Oli Watkins sitting on Rodri, uh, sitting on the two Manchester City pivots with one uh, f uh, midfielder pushing forward and the wingers coming in narrow. So the reason why one, uh, one uh, defensive midfielder pushes forward is to pick up any player who wants to drop deep. The wingers start uh, quite narrow and their main aim is to ensure that they limit central progression of the ball. Even when one of their, full, uh, their forwards is pressed, the midfielder will push forward to cover. Look at this position. You can see how Aston Villa are pressing. Watkins and Diaby are in a tight system, picking up the two pivots, while also their pivots are just behind them. Their main aim is to force the ball to be played to Walker, who is less technical on the ball. So once the ball is played to the center back, you will see now an aggressive press and where the trigger is placed is when the ball is played to the wide areas. Aston Villa like when the opponents play the ball to the wide areas since once the ball is played to the wide areas, they can engage in a touchline press to win the ball high up the pitch. And once they win this ball, they are quite excellent in transition, especially having key players such as Oli Watkins in this kind of dangerous positions and you're going to see how they do this. Now Aston Villa generally do not like to immediately press once they lose the ball but uh, in some instances they especially when they are up they know when to sit deep in a 4-4-2 rigid deep block. So this deep block is so compact that teams have find it problematic to, uh, to break this block down. 
here you can see Manchester City attempting to break uh, Aston Villa's uh, midfield block. You can see the position of Watkins and the DRB is covering Manchester City's pivot. So Manchester City's centre-backs can have time on the ball, but their pivots cannot affect any change in the game. So what happens is that this forces opponents to go now wide and once they go wide is when we see the strength of Aston Villa. So the fullback will pick up the winger but if a player attempts to go to the half space, the defensive midfielder is not afraid to shift and cover this space while the winger will track the runs of the fullback. So they have this trio of understanding where the fullback covers the winger, the midfielder covers the player in the half space while the winger covers the advancing fullback and this is quite remarkable also in this position is that you need to understand that uh, once the winger receives the ball in this position what you're going to see is that the winger is going to come in to try and cover this position but this team is a very compact team since now the winger would be the one who will move to overlap to try to cover the overlapping forward and in some instances we see McGinn dropping in the back line to so how can Chelsea beat Aston Villa? So one, Chelsea can build up from the back with spreading their two centre-backs wide and their full-backs wide with their cent uh, wingers also starting quite wide. This will invite uh, Aston Villa to press Chelsea and we know Aston Villa like to press in a 4-4-2 with the Diaby and uh, Oli Watkins trying. Now the benefit that Chelsea have is that they have two excellent ball-playing centre-backs in this C and uh, Thiago Silva. Sorry, in Badeshile and Thiago Silva. Badeshile being left-footed, starting on the left, is able to pick players in midfield as well as find Caicedo who will drop deeper and this will enable Chelsea to have a midfield overload if Kanich Kumeka also drops deep to play as an extra midfielder. But Aston Villa we have seen when playing against uh, more uh, dominant teams they like to sit in a mid block, mid block of a 4-4-2. Now Chelsea in this way can try to manipulate Villa's position in various ways. Number one playing with three midfielders or inverting one fullback in and this is uh, Levi Colwin. Now I'm not sure whether Colwin is able to play in these deeper congested areas of the pitch but uh, it would be very important if he knew how to receive uh, balls here but this now might push Enzo Fernandez to start quite deeper making Raheem Sterling to come much inwards and occupy the left half space region while Colwin holds the width. This will now point uh, but he should to be the one to be carrying the ball and attempting to play the balls to Colwyn and Colwyn to play slightly wider in that left flank, allowing him standing space to receive the ball in the inside channels and look on to take on centre backs and full backs. But as we all know, uh, this might create overloads against full backs, but uh, Colwyn is not quite fresh attacking. So you've seen that type of type game. And full backs are not usually the scared with Colwyn taking up positions but in the game against uh, Middlesbrough we saw how Mr. C was quite instrumental down the right and he was not afraid of going for to try at least and make those runs he's not an excellent cross of the ball but this can allow uh, Palma to operate in a more centralized and creative area with allowing Palma to have someone who he can link up play with in this wide channels and a player who's not afraid to play the ball to him this will enable Chelsea create that box shift field that can enable them to outmaneuver Aston Villa's tight press and tight marking in the midfield regions. This uh, Palma might also attempt to play these penetrating passes to Disasi. And in the game against uh, Middlesbrough, we saw how Disasi would not be afraid to either take a shot on the ball in these kinds of areas or attempt to make a pass. But this is going to give Chelsea a lot of questions. And even in some instances, this might see now can Chukumeka not even starting and Nomin Ibuike having to come in and play down the right. Because now Chelsea would need an attacking threat down these areas. Now, when Aston Villa have the ball, this is what Chelsea can do in these phases. Rather than pressing with their default 4 4 2 system, Chelsea should focus more on pressing with a 4 2 3 system. Why is this? Because we've seen the way Aston Villa likes to create those midfield overloads with their wingers coming in. They can only deploy Broja as a sole presser to force the ball to be played on one side of the pitch. Once the ball is played on one side of the pitch, Chelsea can now engage in a tight, aggressive touchline press and attempt to move back. 
in the when Aston Villa are in most settled phases of possession and Chelsea are sitting in a mid block, Chelsea should still maintain this 4 2 3 1 system to allow Enzo Fernandez to stay quite deeper so that they can track the runs of these inverting uh, wingers that uh, Aston Villa likes to create. And this will force Aston Villa just to try to build through the wide areas where Chelsea can use their aggressive wingers, their fullbacks, as well as their midfielders to try and cover these places up, as well as shifting across to try and use the touchline as an extra defender to win the ball of Aston Villa. And these are some of the ways that Chelsea can do this and actually win the ball and immediately launch quick and swift counter-attacks with players such as Raheem Sterling, Roger, Kani, and Cole Palmer. Now, we know in the attacking phases of play, what Aston Villa do is they push one fullback high up while the other attacks into form a back three system. Now, the main aim that Aston Villa try to do is to create overloads against Chelsea's fullbacks. So in these instances, Chelsea might decide either to drop uh, both of their wingers deep or use their midfielders. In this case, whereby the, uh, the wide fullbacks will be tasked to be springing out to try and deal with the wide players or the fullbacks who are overlapping and enable Chelsea's uh, midfielders to track runners in the half space region. The Chelsea wingers should also be quite aggressive in pressing uh, Aston Villa's wide centre-backs to prevent them from progressing with the ball higher up the pitch and force them to play these penetrative passes in midfield where the wing midfielders can spring out, win the ball and immediately launch quick transitions for Chelsea. So this is not going to be an easy game for Chelsea with uh, some pundits, a uh, majority of them tipping Chelsea to be the underdogs in this game against Aston Villa. So Chelsea need to be so on point, they need to be clinical with their chances or else they will be out of the FA Cup or have to play a replay at Villa Park, which will be even more difficult. Mauricio Pochettino needs this win because if he fails to win this game and gets knocked out, then the Pochettino out chance will continue to become more and more like the bridge. If you've enjoyed this video, thanks.